The B Tech DMR 6x2 Dual Band DMR HT Radio. Today, Ham Radio 2.0. Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time here with us, be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. Click on the bell notification icon so that every time I post a video, YouTube tells you that, hey, we've got a new video up and you can keep up with everything we're doing on this channel. Today, we were talking about the BTEC 6x2, DMR 6x2 dual band HT. And guess what? I've got my AnyTone right here next to it. There's been a couple of uh, couple guys out there already review the BTEC radio, and uh, I'm going to talk about it a little bit. I think what I want to do today is, number one, BTEC sent me this. I've, I've said this before. Bale Fane Tech is one of my show sponsors. They send me radios to review. They're very gracious about that. Very nice people, very easy to get along with, and good customer service. They sent me this radio. Um, it was a few weeks ago. I can't remember exactly when it was, but I just checked it, and on their website, they have... Firmware version 1.02 is the latest, but this radio has firmware version 1.00. So it's two versions behind. They have three versions of firmware on their website, 1.00, 1.01, 1.02, as you might expect. 1.02 is the latest. This one's two versions behind, so today we're going to update it on this show. Watch this. Unzipping, go into the website here, which is just baofangtech.com. I should take, <laughs> I've heard some, uh, I've heard some hubbub, I've read some hubbub on Facebook about how Baofang is now making a radio that looks like the Anytone. Well, Baofang Tech, as I've said before, is not the same company as Baofang. Baofang Tech has some Baofeng radios, and they've got other radios that they've gotten from, from other sources, and they put their own kind of updates in, into them. Uh, they make one called a 50X3, which I'm going to be... Re yeah, uh, yeah, 50 uh, UV-50X3, which I'll be reviewing later on in the show, which is a upgrade to the Vero Telecom VR6600 that I reviewed like two years on this show and told everyone to stay away from because the receiver was junk. The menus were wonky, and, uh, you know, it would reboot at random. Um, but Baofeng Tech took that design, they went through it, they improved a bunch of stuff on it, and now they have it for sale. And I'm looking forward to reviewing that radio later. So today we're going to take through, I'm going to take, I'm going to go through this, update the, that antenna is loose. I'm going to go through this and update the firmware and show you how to do it on the screen here. So we can follow along. Yep, that's there. Okay, so this is their website, obviously, baofangtech.com forward slash DMR. Here are the three versions of firmware, 0001 and 02, of course. This page says software and firmware repository. So I already downloaded it and went over here, and it actually gives you all the stuff when you unzip it. So it gives you the CPS software, and it gives you the firmware, and it tells you, and it's got a bunch of instruction um, digital APRS settings it tells you how to go in and set one channel to do digital APRS okay so I'm not going to go into that today but this is the firmware firmware updating .pv PDF which is this file right here so we're going to go through this uh, step by step in just a second BTEC is the box there's really this thing really kind of just looks like the uh, it does have a manual by the way some people really like the manual. They really want a manual that they can read through. I'm not big on manuals, especially when they're not written very well. But the, but Baofeng Tech, the, the Baofeng Tech manuals that I've read through have been written pretty well. So um, I've never had any problems with any of their manuals. So install USB driver, virtual comport driver, choose x86 for 32 to x64. Okay, so I've done this before, just not in this model. This is very similar to a bunch of other models that I do. So somebody's going to come along and say, well, you should really prepare yourself. Look, I've done this like two or three dozen times. This is easy. Okay. And some people like to see this, this sort of thing. All right. So that was just a driver install. Big deal. Um, I installed the CPS before I started the video. So we should be good with that. So I'm going to un twist tie <laughs> this. Uh, nope. That's, see, that's the AnyTone, and this is the BTEC. I don't want to get those mixed up if I'm installing firmware. I also want to see, I'm also curious, some of you have probably tried this already. I want to see if the, if my AnyTone code plug can be written to the BTEC radio. Let's 
Okay. In the CPS tool, choose firmware update or launch the tool directly from the... the uh, I've already got the CPS tool installed. This is the CPS. It looks almost exactly like the CPS for both the Anytone tri-band analog radio that I've reviewed on this show. And it also looks like the CPS for the Anytone dual-band DMR radio. So, tool, firmware update. I really like these ones that have built the firmware update tool into their CPS. I think that uh, that's a really good, uh, a good, good feature to have. Yep. Hold pressing the PTT and the alarm key at the same time to power on radio, and the LED will blink red. So we're going to do that. The alarm key is this yellow button on top. If I can reach both of them at the same time. Okay, so we have a red blinking LED right there. Yep, you can see that in the video. And then we're going to go, and then we're going to connect. It says, then, then it says connect the cable. I've already done that. Open update file, one version 1.2. And we're going to go here and here. Dot SPI. There's that. Succeeded. COM port. I hope that COM port is right. If not, we will find out. Right. Click on right. Yes. I didn't change that COM port. That COM port was detected by the software itself. So it's on COM3. You can see clearly that it's writing. There's nothing going on on the screen right now. But the LED on the top has gone solid. It's actually, fla it's, it's actually flashing, but it's flashing slower than it was before I clicked right. So that is ind indicative of the fact that it's actually moving. Right complete. Radio's rebooting itself. Yep, and there it is. It says the uh, the instructions on the screen say to reboot the radio when the update is finished, but the radio rebooted itself. We're going to go in here to the menu. Settings. Device info. And at version firmware 1.02. Success. Okay, so what I want to do is show you guys the difference in the menus between these two radios, and I don't think there hardly are any. I think they're all pretty much the same. But... That is the purpose of the video, so that I can show everybody what I do or don't know, or what you do or don't know. So let's take a look at both of these screens. All right, this is the second piece after, for, after the update. So let's power both radios on at the same time. You see the splash screens on each one. I went through and made sure my firmware was updated on both radios. You just saw that I updated the firmware on this one. So if we go in here to settings, device info, we're at firmware uh, version uh, 1.02, which is the latest version at the time of this recording. If I go to this one, I'm going to look at the differences in the menus here. Device info, we're at firmware version 2.32 which is the latest at the time of this video, as I said. So, what I want to do is go through the... F just compare the menus on both of them, and then we're going to see if we can write a code plug, an Anytone code plug, to this BTEC radio. See if it pricks it. That's always fun. Okay, so menus. You can see the menus are different. This one has messages, talk group. It's called it, it's calling it the talk group. It's the same icon on the left, though. Talk group, TG list, contact. So it's kind of the same thing. TG list. I don't have any contacts in here. By the way, the latest version of firmware kind of nukes your code your uh, code plug. So always have your code plugs backed up. We've got talk group and contacts at the top. Messages, call log, zone, scan, settings, record, GPS, digital monitor, and then back at the top. So they changed the name on the Anytone, but it's basically the same thing. I want to go through the settings menu on both of these. They're a little bit different. And radio set. 
So this one has 45, the Initone has 45, and the BTEC has 47. Just pushing down menu 14, 15, menu 20. AU repeater A and B. That's something new in the latest version of firmware. You have to read up and see what that is. That's not what this video is about. I'm not reviewing that right now. Okay, so the the BTEC has a simplex repeater and a simplex repeater slot in the menu that the Anytone does not have. Don't know what those are? I'm going to read up on those as well and see, maybe I'll do a follow-up video and see what, uh, what those work to be. Once again, this, the purpose of this video is to show you the difference in the menus between these two radios and also to show you if the BTEC, which is the, this is the new one, I'll turn this any tone off. When I updated the, to the latest version of the latest firmware version on the Anytone, it gave me a warning when you download the file. 2.32 is the file, uh, is the version number. And when you download that, it says make sure you have your code plug backed up because it's going to do a basic reset of the radio. So my, my Anytone has no code plug anymore. And I've got backups of my backups. I back up all my code plugs for all my radios to my Google Drive account. So I don't really care about that at all. I'll just reshoot it in there. But what I'm oddly curious about is if the BTEC radio through the BTEC CPS which I've got open let me start my screen cap again so now we've got um, here's the DMR 6x2 which is the BTEC version and I'm going to open I'll see if it even opens you know what it might, it might even open it might just come up and say wrong model you know a lot of the code plugs for the TYTs like the MD380 and 390 look the same as the 2017 or the UV380 and 390 look even more close to the same as the 2017. And they even have, sometimes they even have the right file extension. But they'll come up and they'll say, nope, wrong model. So that may be what we, what we run into here. Code plug, any tone. See, my last... Uh, <laughs> my last... Um, update to my Anytone code plug was in April of this year. This video, this episode is being recorded in October. So that's how long it's been since I've updated my Anytone code plug. I just haven't been carrying this one. And I like this radio better than most of them, so I don't know why I don't carry it as much. Okay, either it wiped out everything in my code plug, or I've got a bogus code plug in there somewhere. There we go. Okay. So it's, prob it's probably a test code plug I was messing with earlier. I'm actually working on the video to do code plug swaparoos between three or four different models using the N0 GSG contact manager. That'll be fun. See that in the upcoming episode. So let's plug this in. Ding, 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 dong. That's the Windows 10 set com. Should be COM3. That's what I've been... Yeah, that's good. Okay, so let's just... Uh, right to the radio. Right radio. Uh, no, just other data is fine. Digital contact list. You can load contact list of the 150,000 contacts that the Anytone holds. I'm not sure the number of contacts the BTEC holds. It's probably the same, realistically. But other data is your channel and your code plug and your zone and everything info. The digital contact list is loaded in a separate file from a separate file. And there it goes. So this is my anytime. I've never built a code plug specifically for the BTEC. Uh, I've only had the BTEC a short time. 
So I've never had the opportunity to actually sit down and build a code plug for the VTEC, but that is it right there. Now you see it's got info, closes flap on the side here, zone. Uh -huh. The zones are really easy to scroll through <clears throat> in the uh, in this radio. It's really kind of cool. Oh, this is ah, <laughs> that's funny. I've got uh, okay, so that code plug must be an experimental code plug, which most of my Anytone stuff is, because it's um, there it is. Okay. Yep. Okay. Good. Repeater not found. No, nope, that's true. Repeater's not found. Open spot. My open spot is running inside, I think. There we go. Keyed up the open spot. I just keyed up talk group 4000, which disconnects every, anything that might be running right now. Let's see if this works. KC5 HWB on DFW Metro testing. Probably. Well, I've got my, molt, my base station... Radio one over there, but it is not turned up. Volume's not turned up, so uh, let's kill KC five HWB DFW Metro testing one two three. No, it's not coming across the. Uh, I'm probably just not hitting it. my my open spot is inside the house upstairs in the closet, <laughs> which is fine when I'm inside. It works fine when I'm inside, but I'm out here in the shack today, so. That is uh, not hitting it. I heard something a minute ago, but not that. Anyway, test successful. Upgraded the firmware. Easy to do. Showed you how to do that. Um, showed you the differences in the menus between the Anytone and the BTEC, which are virtually the same. Couple, couple other options in the BTEC radio. And... Um, Loaded an Anytone code plug into the Beofeng Tech DMR 6x2 radio. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, if you like this video, subscribe to me on YouTube. And uh, click that bell. This is WJ5VOP on Stateline. Yeah. There you go. So many you go. Somebody talking on Statewide. So I'm hearing it. I'm just not hitting it because I didn't come up on Netwatch. So if you uh, subscribe to me and click that bell notification icon, then YouTube will tell you every time I post a new video, usually on Mondays but maybe more often than that. 73, and we'll see you next time.